Okay, so we're using reason and someone, our friend, colleague or someone who wants us to work on a track has given us the stereo mix down. They want us to enhance it, clean it up or make it louder, bolder, better sounding. And we can do that. Sure, there's no problem with doing that. But you may come across a few issues with stereo stems. What I'll do is I'll play the demo stem that we've got. It's just a simple four bar loop. And I'll indicate what is going on and what we find with this track. Okay, so what we can see here on the peak meter is that we've got basically an overload and it's caused by, as we can see, it's the hi-hats that are causing the problem. Now you can do a few things, you could limit the signal, but that may cause squashing and you lose the dynamics of the track. You could compress it. Uh, but again you may lose your dynamics so what you can do is you can do something called dynamic EQing and it's using the compressor philosophy and the approach but you're using an equalizer to do the dynamic changes for you what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a walkthrough with you of how we would do this and we'll be using Black Knight in this example we've got our loop track combinator and it's an audio track in this case and we'll show insert effects and from the list that we've got on our website we'll go through and we'll actually create this listing so what we need is a spider audio merger splitter we'll also need a spider CV merger splitter we'll need two black knights and we'll disconnect for the moment we'll also need a compressor and the M class compressor is fine for this we're also going to use the scope junior CV because we can use this as an oscilloscope and a visual representation of a dynamic curve and we're also going to use a line mixer 6.2 to remerge but also use it as a preview and an actual process channel hot swapper okay we're just going to wire this up and we're going to take the original signal and feed it into the spider We'll take the spider audio out and feed it into the first black knight and label the first black knight listen. This is going to be used to listen to the certain areas that's causing us the problems. From the output of that, go straight into the compressor and we'll call the compressor listener. The scope junior you can label as view because we're going to be using it to look at the CV shape shortly and we can run the audio output into the first channel of the line mixer and then route the audio of the line mixer back to close the loop through. So if I run this at the moment and we'll switch the compressor to bypass in a moment reset all the controls and we can leave attack and release for the moment or we bypass we get no differences which is fine for what we want to do now there's a couple of ways that we can listen to the signal of what we want to be our dynamic area 
basically we, we want to focus on the area that's causing us the problems we know it's the hi-hats so we can use the spectrum analyzer so we can see the area that's causing us the concern as you see it's up in this area and at one key point we're getting around the same level as the kicks which okay in limiting purposes you could get away with it but we want to do this dynamically and we want to maybe use this as a backing track and a vocal is going to sit on top and if you end up adding a vocal to the hi-hats you may cause more problems later so we're going to clean this up now and we can use the black knight the first one in here EQ mode and we'll get no signal playing this is natural this is the way that the black knight works and what I'm going to do I'm just turning up band 4 in this case it's quite broad but this is what would be added to the signal so we can tighten it and it's treated it like a band pass So roughly around the 9k areas where it's causing us the first problem. So let's get more towards the sound that we want. We can really push this because this is going to be just a, an audio signal that we're using to feed the compressor and we're going to use this information later to force the dynamics onto our next EQ. So we've got that sound at the minute, we could, because it's in here EQ mode, a low pass becomes a high pass, a high pass becomes a low pass, and it just switches round. So we could use this inverted low pass, a uh, high pass, to add even more information. And we know we're clipping. We we're, we're not too bothered about the clipping at the minute, because again, we're not going to be using this in our final signal. This is just something that's going to be fed into the compressor and used as an information source. Okay, now we'll continue doing a little bit more routing. I'll reduce the cable clutter and from the compressor we can use the CV out and go straight into split A from split A we're going to go and feed in for simplicity terms band 4 on our dynamic EQ we'll take the audio from the original signal, so the clean signal going into the dynamic EQ, Black Knight, and from there into the line 6. So now we get 2. But we don't want to mash the two together, we just want to hear the listener at the minute. So we switch this into mute mode, and the benefit of this is we can literally press solo, and all the other channels will be muted. Press solo again it's like a switch so you can listen or hear the process okay so nothing's really going on here at the minute because we're going to feed an inverse CV input to the view still nothing going on that's because the compressor's not getting any information so we turn the compressor on, when we move the threshold, remember the ratio is still 1 to 1, so we're getting no differences there. Threshold back up, go around 2 to 1, start to bring the threshold down, and we start to see this appearing. We'll speed that up. What we're seeing is the CV curve 
as an envelope because of the trigger from the CV and the gain reduction is creating this envelope. So you see these small spikes or small dips in this case. It's the small hats and when you get the open hat you get a longer envelope. So we can change the shape of this and we can hear the shape and this is basically going to be used as our follower. So it's going to move the gain control when we feed the CV into this unit. It's going to be dipping this gain by this amount each time and that amount is going to be 0 minus 2 to minus 4 dB. So if we want to do it more we can bring the threshold down. And you see the envelope getting larger. We can change the tail so it's more abrupt when it's finished with the compressing signal. We can release it to make the envelopes blur into more of one another. We can have the attack so again it's more of a shallow or a slower attack. We can change the envelope however we see fit. The more of the ratio you put up, the more of the effect. And you can hear the effect, that's really smacking it. So from 0 to minus 18 dB in this sense is what it will do to the signal when it feeds into here. One note to remember is that we need to do the inverse polarity because we're using a straight signal. You could literally change from the inverse and leave that off, but in this instance we're using the invert for the view to see what's going on. Okay, so let's really compress the signal and we know we've still got the area, but it's, it's squashing the sound, but because the sound's getting squashed, that's not too much of a concern. It's more that it's squashed it enough to dip the audio around the signal that we want. To make life a little bit easier, we can copy the patch of the first listen EQ, feed it into the second EQ, so we've got all the settings, but turn here EQ off. Now we've got the same curve, reset the gain to zero because we want it to be cutting. Well, so if you boost it first, it'll only just reduce back what you've boosted. We don't need this band and it can be reset. And all the other bands, if need be, you can turn them off. So what's going to happen is I'm going to play the audio through and it's going to send the compressed signal as a CV signal, convert it and move this gain control. So remember this is our compressed sound and I'll ease back off so it's our original sound. Remember to turn that back on if you're copying the patch and you'll notice this notch. Now if I remove the threshold the notch goes. So we know on every hit of that cymbal and the hi-hats it's cutting. So if it's not quite in the right place because we see another spike there we can enhance that spike as well. It takes patience and time to find the right sounds.
And as you can see, every time we affect the compressor, it affects the curve. We might find that this actual frequency isn't really aiding us a great deal. It's in roughly the right area, but we're still here in the high end. So we can emphasize the cut by raising the frequency. So now it's cutting higher up. So it's using a lower frequency to cut out the peaks. So now nothing is going above the 6 dB in this case and the kicks and the snares, everything else is untouched if we still find it a bit too much we can widen it we can reduce the ratio down remember the more you reduce the less it's going to cut when you get a loud signal So you want to try and get this to sound as natural as you can. If you find it too much, you can literally just ease off. And it's an improvement, and it does take time to get it right. Now if you've got a couple of bands that you want to use, you can literally send in another band, do exactly the same again, and you can do exactly the same principle, because we've got everything already rooted up and set up all together, this EQ is still going to do what it's supposed to, this EQ is going to dynamically change the sound, and you can play around with the trim controls on the back, so you can have less of a cut in certain areas or more of a cut if we find it's too much emphasis you just cut back here because you may have two bands you want two different settings and it's a lot more flexible to do it this way As you can see, it's started to improve a bit more. Now the soft knee may smooth off the curve a bit more, so it's a bit more natural sounding again. Some people like the sound of the hard knee, some like the sound of the soft. It depends on the music you're using at the time. As you can see, it's completely controlled this top end now. So it's, it's a very powerful tool to use Dynamic EQ for cases like this where you find in it is more of a problem with a stereo stem you can't go back in and just go into the track and adjust the hi-hats because you've not got that ability if you did it with an EQ on its own you'd scoop out all the information out of other instrumentation as well so you may have some other side effects to doing it as a broad EQ all the time so for drum loops and things like that, this can help for Vocals, when it's already got a vocal mix, you may need to do mid and side dynamic EQing where it gets more involved, but you can affect the side information where you get left or right panned or very wide signals. You can EQ just the side signals and leave the vocal, which is commonly in the middle, unaffected. So you can actually start to EQ and leave the vocal alone in the stereo stem and get to do more manipulation, especially if you have the instrumentation that overlaps 
a vocal range with say a saxophone or your higher instrumentation such as hi-hats and your percussive sounds you can cross all these boundaries by splitting the signal even more I'll go through that tutorial a little bit later probably using Red Queen or REQ131 because they both use mid and side processing and you can do both dynamic EQing with those in exactly the same principle as what we've just done here well, hopefully you've enjoyed looking at this tutorial fire any questions over to us at tutorials at lab1recordings.co.uk and we'll be glad to help you guys out okay thanks for watching